happens in winter? We I'll buy let you know in November. <laughs> <laughs> I asked what happens in winter. Uh, uh, we'll buy a heater, probably, and stand it outside the truck and bring a snow shovel with us and give people discounts to shovel their way up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like hot chocolate? <laughs> And we're going to start selling coffee from Crooked River in the winter, too. That's something we're not doing now. But we'll try to adapt, and we can still go anywhere. we just got to dig our own way when the snow plows come through. Hopefully the same thing that happens. You know, a lot of cold cities, Boston, New York. Of course, New York has big foot traffic. But, uh, you know, Columbus, Chicago, or not Chicago, Detroit, they all have these sort of same things. Uh, we're just going to have to target the places that have bigger pockets of people mm -hmm. that are actually doing it. And um, we're going to work through um, corporate catering, stuff like that, where, you know, we'll an office building orders 30 lunch boxes, something like that, we're going to drive it up, drop it off to you. So, Other questions? Because I know this, got one right here in the front row. Hi. Um, thank you guys for doing this, taking the time. Um, my question kind of relates to the fact we talked a lot about today um, buying from local farmers and sort of supply issues. Um, and you hear a lot in the news about how agricultural policies are kind of stacked against small local farmers and about the dearth of young farmers coming up to kind of take the reins eventually. Um, I guess my question is, A, do you see that in your personal interactions? Is it really a problem on the ground as much as it's made out to be? And B, what kind of role do you see the restaurant community playing in trying to affect systemic change? That's a good policy yeah, question. Yeah, yes. I, 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 think go the, I think the biggest problem is is the second thing you said is the the lack of farmers' children wanting to be children or, or wanting to be farmers or that's so hard. or have you know having to be farmers. And back in the day when you your father was a farmer, that's what you did. You mm -hmm. you're out on the tractor. But now, you know our our community has shrunk so much that you can get anywhere. You know, you're they're on the internet. They know they know there's other jobs than being a farmer um, right out of the gate. So. I think that's the biggest problem is all these all these people's children not wanting to yeah. to be farmers. I mean, but farmers. at the same time, hopefully, they some some people like us that are, you know with like minds as us want to be farmers and want to get into this business and kind of keep that going and start a new generation of young yeah. farmers. Then there's an urban movement as well. It's like, I mean, being a farmer doesn't mean you have to live out in the boonies. Um, there's a whole network of urban farmers that we support, and they're taking um, land that is even downtown. And we have some amazing active councilmen who are working on behalf of young urban farmers who, you know, why have a piece of land sitting there because in 10 years you want to build there? Well, we can grow food on that. And there's many ways now that, like us in Tremont, you know, that you can grow food within the city limits and, and talk about the footprint. You know, it's like, it's right there. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as the, the agriculture department, as a chef, I know that um, farmers have to battle that all the time. In Ohio, coming from New York, it's amazing to me how much more difficult it is to, like the agriculture, what, the, what they don't do to help our farmers, like how they fight against in, the, in, the, in an effort to supposedly protect the consumer, whereas a chef, I'd like to take on that liability myself, and if I know how to properly cook something, I'm not going to hurt a customer. But where you literally can't purchase certain ingredients from a farmer, even if you know how to produce it and turn, so I know that it's like I got assigned eventually because of all the costs. I made complaining. I eventually got a counselor with the <laughs> agricultural problem. So every time I have to talk on behalf of a farmer, where the farmers will ask you not to give them credit. Like, don't talk on my behalf. Mm. They don't want to get any limelight for that. But just it, about issues. And I think if more consumers were to, you know, battle them, they would understand that as a consumer, as a chef and as a consumer, you, you want them to butt out. You want, we want the quality of what they will have to offer. We don't want to make it harder. We, like apple cider, there are five generation, you know, like your apple presses that are literally being shut down now in the state of Ohio and turned into vinegar bins because they are unable to take it to market. Like the real legit, real deal apple cider that you remember drinking when you were a kid, yeah. that in the fall you just want to bathe in it. You can't get that. Like you cannot get that unless you go to the farm and unless you put them at risk. Yep. Like I have a farmer who will like slide it to me off of his truck, but he's not really allowed to. I mean, um, but it's like black market, you know, cider. It's like, come on, this right. isn't stuff. You know, we don't want it super sweet. We don't want it heated up. We don't want it, like, people want that quality and the connection to the way it was done when it was intentional. But you guys have to speak up and keep the quality in our food. One last question. 
Okay, I didn't know you had to be a comedian to be a chef. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, crazy. But <laughs> <laughs> crazy helps. Comedian's good. Yeah. I would I would be really interested in hearing you talk about the creative side of being a chef and how you keep coming up with really fresh, exciting new things. We go to the market. I mean, that's what we do. Yeah. We, we I go to the market and we did a tasting for a wedding the other day. We yeah. just picked out a bunch of stuff. We got to the tasting and they're like, what are you giving us? And I was like, we don't know yet. I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll yeah, yeah. Out. Oh, that's exactly what we did. We said, yeah. this is what we have. And yeah. let's figure it out. And it's just a lot of it's inspiration based. You see what you can get. You want the best. And I, yeah. every single chef here yeah. gets the best. Yeah. And that's exactly what we want to serve. And as far as the two of us go, I mean, when we see something that's the best, we're going to create a dish. We're going to create something based around that just because we want that to item. To showcase the ingredient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sleep deprivation. That helps. Coffee, <laughs> more wine. And there's a good deal of experimentation that goes into it. I know mm -hmm. some. it's yeah. it's fun to go down in the prep kitchen at 1 o'clock in the morning with a bottle of wine and yeah. a pile of produce and start yep. you know, ripping through it and tasting it and mixing it together and see, see what you can create for tomorrow's menu or next week's menu. And uh, it always gets exciting knowing what's coming next. The farmers drop off strawberries this week and tell me next week I'll have this and keeps you constantly excited gets you working a week ahead yeah. in your head knowing you yeah. have that coming up you know yeah. soon we'll have beautiful squash yeah changing oh, yeah. seasons definitely, definitely a big motivation definitely sure. how can I showcase how can I best showcase this ingredient without messing with it too much and it, that that comes you know like right now when, with interviewing a chef de cuisine I want to hand them eight ingredients that I picked up at the farmer's market make me a dish to showcase those ingredients and make way for more like I want people to know how amazing this ingredient is so as a chef, it all comes down to technique and flavor profiles and how would you put it together and get people really excited about, you know, garlic scapes. Like, well, what is that? <laughs> right. You know, this is many ways you can use it. So That's great, Angel. Last slide. And uh, I just wanted to suggest everyone, I think the chefs are going to stay here for a few minutes. We're going to wrap up. Mm -hmm. If you get a chance, come up to the stage and say hello and ask a few questions. I think they would appreciate that. And my last question to the chefs is, all right, who's going to let me in the kitchen for a day? Because I'd like to come You by. can come on the truck yeah. anytime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can come well, on the truck anytime. You won't drive. It's a free labor. Let's, let's, yeah. let's find the what next 90 degree do? day and you can come in my kitchen. I'm telling you. That would be a big dream for me. So we can anytime. talk afterwards. Anytime. 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 I'll grease some palms. Uh, we love free labor. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so anybody, come on in. I've got a schedule. I'll do it cutting the table. You can see the, the yeah. great personalities on the stage, and certainly they're exceptional chefs. So again, I'm going to close out today at the City Club. I want to thank everyone for attending today. Thank you very much.